What's up? All right, so the delay, I'm in Vegas. I'm just a uh, quick thing. We're down here, Josh and I, one of my MMA athletes and one of my very, very good friends. Been working together for three years. He's the guy in the beard who shredded all the time. Yeah, crazy guy. So Kayani asked us to come down and kick ass. And that's what we did, pretty much. I mean, the way I felt on stage, it, it solidified the fact that we kick ass. And I don't think Kayani's been hit like that before. When you get me and Josh in the same same area, same room, like we're just so enthusiastic about fitness and life. And this is all we do. MMA, training, fitness, nutrition, you name it. We just want to get people on that track. So we were able to just get that across and just get people amped up. And the crowd was fit freaking fantastic so they loved it every single bit of it it felt amazing we uh sat after about three hours just taking pictures with everybody it was fun it was most fun i've had in vegas ever and i hate vegas so <laughs> for those of you who haven't been to vegas uh, don't want to ruin it for you but i've been here too many times it feels like and i'm not a baller so i don't you know not doing that business all right so the keto blueprint continues all right so I'm gonna start from the very top. I have a few, this might be a 30 minute video, so strap in, seat belts on, get pumped. All right, so Kyle Johnson asks, do you recommend carbs right after a workout, even on keto? I currently do a whey casein blend one hour pre and 30 minutes post-workout as recommended by Dr. Jake Wilson. Should I do a small amount of carbs in the post-shake and skip the fat? Thanks, man, I'm currently leaning down. And adding muscle, I'm already around 11%, 5, 10, 182 pounds. Great progress. Yes, and, and the thing is, you'll be able to get leaner and gain muscle at the same time. You know, you follow Jake. I don't got to reiterate that. But for the others out there, it is possible. And I think there's a question here. You do not have to gain fat to gain muscle. That's a old school, like, I don't even know where the conundrum came from. I think it was just a justification to eat as much shit as possible. But I don't know, maybe. Not gonna go into that debate. But so, um, whey casein, that's great. Popping in it before, and, and it, it's gonna go back to what your goal is. Obviously, his is pure hypertrophy. So, putting on as much muscle, dropping fat. So, what that's gonna do is, I prefer you taking this yes, a little pre, maybe 10 to 15 grams, and then 20 to 30 grams post. And this is gonna depend on your workout volume. The type of carb I really like to use, okay, if, if you don't have the budget and you're just gonna go on food, then a slow, a low glycemic, a slow burn carb, like um, sweet potato, people can't handle sweet potatoes, I would go with something more like squash, a bunch of that, some black beans, something like that. That's gonna give you the glucose amount that you need to actually pedal through that workout pretty well. And that needs to be two or two and a half hours before, because in a sense, you want that to get in your system and almost be getting out of your system by the time you train, so you're not working on, on ideas digesting stomach so the blood flow can travel to the extremities versus being trapped in your stomach and still digesting while you're trying to get that blood flow into the muscle. All right, so why am I yawning after my first exercise? Sucralose in my protein spiking insulin. Uh, I don't, sucralose has to be pretty high amounts to spike insulin. Yawning, you're probably not breathing, be honest with you. So like when people are yawning in the middle of workout, either one, they're very tired, which if you're not, or you'd had some caffeine, you're not breathing. Um, so focus on your breathing. What the yawning is, in a sense, is your body wanting more breath. It's just, hey, you're hyperventilating, you're not bringing the bottom, you're not bringing the top, you're not breathing all the way out, so your body's like, whoa, I need to dig, get one big breath in because you're about to put me through another set, things like that, all right? So breathe. <sighs> Amanda Nicole Barbian. Hopefully I didn't slaughter that last name. It should be easy. <laughs> Would you suggest a carb refeed versus a fat refeed day? What if you don't do any refeeding for prep? Technically in ketosis, you shouldn't have to do prep. Now, if you're a bikini athlete, I'm gonna go over this. The, the loading and prep week on a bikini should be very, very simple. So Keely, this is for you too. She's actually one of my clients. She just messaged me saying this is the best she felt, except for she felt pretty shitty at two weeks out, which if you're two weeks out, it's time to feel shitty. You should be pushing that limit to where your body hasn't been before. Um, all the compounding stress of doing a show, whether it's six weeks out or 12 weeks out, you gotta realize that every single thing, every single day, every single meal, every single workout, every single moment, 
you are putting Matt in the future to put yourself on stage with all that compounded. So that's going to be a massive amount of stress no matter what. And that kind of hype and buildup is going to get exhausting one to two weeks out when you're doing the, the, you know, the precipice of your cardio, the precipice of your, your caloric restriction, all that stuff. It's the highest. So you're going to have that, you know, little bit of bump and you just deal with it. Okay. So two weeks out, I'm going to feel shitty. It's just going to happen right after that. You're going to feel right and good again. Okay. So carb refeed, that's going to depend. I mean, if you're really, really, really dragging ass, then we probably end up doing a little bit of carb refeed. Now, the nice thing is, is like going back to Kyle's question about intra workout carbs, this goes back to who is Feldman's question in the future that I'll be asking, so I predict the future, is going to be the fact that you can have intra workout carbs and it's not going to kick you out of ketosis. All right, we also talked on the podcast recently we did with Jake and Ryan and Tristan that, you know, 200 grams of carbs on Saturday or Sunday might not kick you out. If you are crushing it, doing some hit, doing some cardio, really smashing some muscle contractions or some high intensity um, workouts, you're going to need the glucose or you're going to be able to earn that glucose and use it instead of just kicking you out of keto and you're like, damn it, there goes all my progress. Okay. But again, if you're out of keto for a night, there's a good chance you're going to be back in in the morning if you've been in for three, four weeks. All right. So this is a big one too. When you first get into keto, whether it's like four or five days, when you're very, very first starting out, 0.4 on the blood glucose, according to Dr. Diagostino, was in keto. Now, as you, if you test in the morning and it's 0.4, there's a good chance you're gonna test in the evening is gonna be higher, 0.7, 0.8. So you're gonna be deeper in. You're in no matter what once it hits that 0.4. And a lot of people get confused of like, okay, should I make adjustments? Do I need to get deeper in? No, being in is being in. All right, so with one of the clients that I had, blonde hair, blue eyed, very, very fast metabolism, six foot two, he's a Capoeira expert, martial artist, doctor as well. He had a very hard time seeing high ketone readings and that's due to the fact that his body is very efficient at using ketones. So it's not gonna register as high because his body is utilizing them. All right, so that's the same thing with the ketones and the sticks, all right? So I'm gonna cover some basics on getting in. When I first start getting into ketosis, it's good to start measuring about five, six days out on your pee and seeing where that turns color. Everyone says it's not reliable, but do you really wanna spend $30, $40 in blood sticks to maybe see if you're in on day four, day four and five and then keep spending that kind of money? No, so I ask my client to pee on a stick, see when it turns a color and then check blood after, all right? And if you get the breath monitor, which there's been some, there's a chick out there is like, oh, the breath monitor doesn't work and the keto sticks doesn't work and blood's the only way it works. That's so far from the truth, it's not even funny. So don't get caught up in that little dogma. Um, they all work and they're all there for a reason and they're meant for you to test various levels of like, are you wasting a lot? Is your blood high and your urine's extremely massive? Is your breath, your burned off ketones higher than everything else? So just correlate, again, again go experiment with yourself. <laughs> All right, so carb refeed, fat refeed again. <sighs> you don't have to do any refeed. That's kind of the idea with ketosis is that your body should just gradually get leaner, add muscle, and then be able to pop on stage. Now, if you are feeling like you're dragging ass and you can't push through that wall the next day, try taking a day off, don't do any cardio, chances are you'll get leaner, all right? So if that doesn't work, you do take a day off, then it's probably time to start eating some food. So uh, go with some fats. I posted some avocado cookie recipe. There's a bulletproof ice cream, which I've modified a little bit. I take a little bit of the butter out and add more coconut cream. Um, I just like the texture that way. And so you can fat bomb your ass off, all right? So 100 grams of fat, boom, there's your refeed, and that's gonna give you 900 calories, 1,000 calories. So if you don't wanna go that heavy, you don't. But the nice thing about that is you're going to not see that increase in weight. And it's not gonna make you look like you're holding water. But also, make sure you're still salting and you're drinking a lot more water on that day because a lot of people don't know that fat is a diuretic. And so on ketosis, you're just expelling water all the time. The more fat you eat, the more fat you're gonna split off. So going into a show, if you fat load, the more water you drink, the more fat you eat, the more dry you'll look, all right? And the more full you'll get. You don't wanna cut all sodium out because you start cramping and you always need some sodium to maintain fullness. But that's that. But when it comes down to bikini, unless you're shredded like 9, 10% on the pro stage, there's really no need to carb load, fat load. It's just walk on, walk off. 
All right. And I picked a lot of this up from John Meadows. So it wasn't me coming up with this. It was me following very, very elite, high level, smart, brilliant coaches and seeing that, you know what, you can just walk a guy on stage, walk a guy off. There doesn't have to be any tricks, no diuretics. If they're shredded, they're shredded. If they look good, they look good. All you need is some lighting, some tanning and some confidence and you can go represent that. All right. So again, it's going to be very, very, very individual. You have to play with it and see what happens. All right. So Alan Espinoza says, if I eat two meals a day and my protein requirements is 100 grams, is it okay to eat 50 grams of each meal? Absolutely. And the thing is too, um, if you're into ketosis, like deep, 14, 21, and let's go three months, you can eat 50 grams of protein by itself and it won't kick you out of ketosis, okay? As long as you had fat in the morning, as long as you had fat somewhere in the day and your fat is out weighing. Now, if you're just playing around and if you don't want to risk it, if you got 50 grams of fat or protein, make sure there's 50 grams of fat with it. Plain and simple, make sure your fat is dominating the protein, just spanking its ass, all right? So yeah, I eat two meals a day all the time. My uh, protein requirements are, you know, 100, 150, 150, 170. Um, sometimes I've gone down to 100 when I'm traveling and I don't have a workout that day. My requirements are that high, okay? My my goals aren't get huge anymore, though. I do want bigger arms just because, you know, Larry was my first mentor and those 20-inch arms, just they just look so sexy to me, all right? so. I'm just fine tuning it all the time. So I don't have to refeed, I don't have to feed like crazy. I just kind of go with the flow, which has put me in a better state because I'm always improving, but it's not like I have this dire need to just get huge and shredded and stuff like that. So I've been able to just play with myself <laughs> versus um, here's a show, what did I do? Here's a game plan, let's shove it in there and then pff, what the hell happens after that, all right? So, come on. Shahir asks, well, Craig, you answered this before, but I remember but I need to ask it again to be sure. Scrolling down. Oh, stop it, laptop. Just stop it. All right, so right now I'm eating a surplus of calories to fix my metabolism and keto. I'd like to ask you regarding carbs. As the video suggested, 200 grams to be taken while bulking. Should I eat them post-workout or work out in the evening while bulking? They were replenishing my glycogen stores so they were playing my glycogen stores or when to eat. So should I, I should be eating fats and protein till my workout at night, then after my workout consume carbs and maybe with protein whey. Thanks Greg, your earlier advice on eating and maintenance is helping me feel a lot, helping me a lot, I feel like I'm regaining my lost muscle mass before. Thanks a ton for your help. Awesome man. Yeah, so he was in a deficit for a very long time and keto is honestly the one of my favorite ways to fix a metabolism if they've been consistently chronically dieted. So I put them in a surplus immediately because I haven't seen a lot of people really gain fat on keto. So I've been able to jump them up and if you go in a surplus of calories, there's a good damn chance your weight's gonna go up. So just be comfortable with that. The 200 gram mark was me. All right, so I was doing two days at that point. I was doing a CNS crazy workout like you might've seen in some of my videos and then a hypertrophy workout. I mean, I was going hard. Okay, so like if I wouldn't have any glucose, I mean, I was eating three to 400 grams of fat a day as well. I mean, so 300 grams of fat, 200 grams of carbs, and my protein is still 150. So the ratios, if we're talking that, they were still pretty keto. All right, so um, I suggest during, okay? After, if you have to do it after, and that's the only way you can do it, yeah. But I don't think that's optimal. Post-workout nutrition has kind of died off in terms of carbohydrates. Um, I believe in doing it pre if it's hypertrophy because that's going to create some, you know, ready some inflammation, increase some glucose for pumps and cell swelling and all that good hyperemia stuff that's going to happen. And then during, you're going to be flooding those nutrients from the insulin like response you get from your workout. Your glute 4 activators, your soakers are soaked up now. They're turning on. They're just soaking up every nutrient that you give it. And then, since we already have the insulin spike, since we already have nutrients going, hour after the workout. So I like to let the uh, inflammation sit in for a little bit on a hypertrophy workout. So pre, during, wait half an hour to an hour before I do anything. And then I personally do a lot of BCAs, one scoop of ProTF, which is only 10 grams of protein, because I don't like a lot of whey. It makes me feel like shit. And that's another thing too, like whey can create inflammation, all right? So if it's not a hydrolysis, if it's not a hydrolysis, then there's a good chance it's gonna be very inflammatory. So get the proper amount of protein post-workout. Make sure I do greens, I do BCAs, I do taurine, I do everything that I can to alkaline my system. I'm actually taking a really good product named Renuvo that has a plethora of antioxidants like uh, curcumin, 
So bringing that inflammation down and then I just have protein. Since my insulin's already up and it's gonna technically stay elevated for two to two and a half hours, I can just force feed protein in there and that's still getting shuttled to the glute muscle and then later I can eat another meal and I don't have to worry about you know any fatty acids floating around while I have insulin around so they're not getting put into fat. All right, hopefully that makes sense. So I also live in Utah. What local butcher farms and suppliers do I use? And what are my thoughts on rest pause training? Where would you use it? I, will, I, I don't have anything on YouTube yet. I, I do, but I don't. They'll be all compiled later. I'm having someone do that for me. Um, and yes, we'll definitely get you involved in FitCon, man. Anything we can do to help, like we don't make money off of that. It's literally everything we get, we put right next to the next one because we just want to bring out the best, brightest, baddest, most amazing event for you to come participate in. So yeah, we'll definitely love your help, bro. I appreciate it. So rest pause. Anytime you want to turn up intensity. So I don't, I don't believe in using a, you know, a certain method for four longer than four to six weeks, six weeks being maybe the max eight being the total max. If you're still seeing improvements, I do feel that you need to stick to something before two, four and six weeks to actually get strong and see the real benefits out of that methodology. So rest pause training for some of you who don't know, it's if I go to failure, I hit a set, I'm going to just rest for five, 10, 15, 20 seconds, depending on, you know, who the coach is. And then I'm going to hit as many reps as I can rest, hit as many reps as I can rest. All right. There's similar to something called cluster, not necessarily, um, failure, but what you're doing is you do a rep, wait five, 10 seconds, do a rep, wait five, 10 seconds. So it's the ultimate power output and you can maintain strength along that curve. So I, I believe in it. I think it's great. And it's pretty much if you have a weak body part, that's a really great place to apply that. So those intensification, and if you just want to kill yourself, throw it on squats. Yeah. All right. So boom, boom, boom. What are my thoughts and impact on butter, cheese and on estrogen? I haven't seen anything that says it's going to really jack it up. If it's pasteurized, that's going to be the key. Like if it's, it's, if it's conventional, it's going to be acidic and I don't believe you should buy that at all. Um, dairy should never be in your life if it's conventional or just it's shit. It's not even dairy. I mean, to call it dairy is just, is just, it's a shame. Cause I love cheese. Uh, not that butter's butter. I mean, I love butter, but I love cheese and I've gotten leaner on cheese. I've been told I would never be able to get leaner on cheese. And it's true. When I was eating crappy cheese, there's no way. Now that I'm eating, you know, grass fed, organic, Whole Foods brand, hey, throwing it out there, but it's the truth, man. It, it, it really does make a difference. And those who are going to argue and say it doesn't, come on, like go three months of eating clean, like not eating clean, eating, you know, grass fed and organic, then go back. And I, if you don't feel different, man, you're lying to yourself. All right. So try it out. All right. So I don't believe it has any effect on estrogen. My estrogen is fine. Um, I haven't seen any studies or anything that proves otherwise. Maybe someone can come in and chime in and help me out on that one. All right. So I've been waiting on a keto blueprint. Glad you're waiting. Awesome, man. Keep you waiting for more. So he sees, he sees on the keto gains group guidelines to say, divide your fats into 60% polyunsaturated, 20% monounsaturated, 20% saturated. And just want to know my opinion. Next question coming from BPEC. Okay, so first question is, I actually reverse that. I do 60% saturated. I, call, I, find, I kind of line more with a primal blueprint style of eating from Mark Sisson, and they don't limit saturated fats. I believe my hormone function was best on that. When I was eating a lot of polyunsaturated, I wasn't really getting lean. It was kind of funky. And my brain function didn't feel that good. So it depends on the individual. I also, there's been a couple of studies coming out lately that says too many polyunsaturated fats are going to wreck you. So choose what you want to side with, play with it around and see what it makes you feel like. I prefer a 33 across the board. So 33%, 33%, 33% if you're really going to get nitpicky about that. But at the same time, my saturated is probably 60, 20, 20 for the polyunsaturated, monounsaturated. So next question coming from BPAC of training being taught to either protein or supplement every three to four hours to keep protein synthesis on. The Ben has taught is that if it's not on, you're either building or losing muscle. You have a question answered, but coming from bodybuilding, you would know. Okay, so... That's the thing. If you're in ketosis, you're sparing protein all day. So, I mean, if you're lean, intermittent fasting, like only eating two, three meals a day, isn't a good idea. To get to 10%, like 
Okay, when I mean lean, I mean under 10. So intermittent fasting from anything above 10, 12% is great. It works. Once you get to 10, 12%, it's time to start throwing a meal or two in between those windows or cut your window down. Let's say if you're doing a 20 hour fast, a four hour feed, it's time to bump it to a, like a two, eight and a um, eight, 16, eight. So 16 hour fast, eight hour feed, and then a 12, 12, and then a, you know maybe a 10, 14 of you are actually eating you know, 14 hours. So play around with that. Obviously it's a, it's a person to person case, but then the whole protein synthesis thing, um, I think it's really only important to really make sure you're turning protein synthesis on in and around your workout. Um, always being anabolic is not necessary. And unless you're trying to be someone like Ben, Okay, so that's the thing is if you're trying to be 300 pounds, then absolutely every two, three hours, you need to start having that protein turnover. Okay, bam, 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 synthesis, synthesis, synthesis all day. If you're trying to gain muscle and lose fat, that's not necessarily important. So go with what fits your schedule on that point. Okay, so if you can get in meals every three to four hours and that's comfortable for you, then do it. Make sure you're getting 30 plus grams of protein. If you want to stay in keto, make sure you're still outweighing that and your ratio is still fit, all right? Um, I know a lot of people don't like to use ratios, but you know, percentages work here and there for people. So I don't really side with one thing. Don't use ratios, don't use macros. I'm gonna communicate with you what you can understand and what you can apply to your life. So on that note, let's go to the next questions. Bam! All right, so I got on the Keto Gains group, which Lewis asks, what is your favorite group and why is it Keto, keto Gains? Literally, it is, man. MI40 Nation, obviously, I love you guys too. And that's a phenomenal group. They're both phenomenal. And keto, keto, what's best is I can take the basic questions that I get and send them to that group and you guys just take care of them. I mean, there's nothing better than that for an extremely busy coach like myself. And what Lewis has created has been just a wonderful environment. And it's funny because like, it's interesting because you know we all seem to be along the same mind path. Those who choose to do keto, we all seem to be self-experimenting, very open. None of us are tearing each other down, which, you know, vegans, they're crazy. So, you know, they, they're, uh, awesome group and then again mi40 nation jump on that one too like join that website it's the most applicable way to add muscle and lose fat so if you're a competitor or anything you're not on it you need to get on it i'm on there all the time on the head ambassador i'm good friends with everyone on there i've helped them they've helped me it's a solid community and you can go there and get real answers and i mean it's ran by the man himself he's, he's the shit when it comes down to that all right so could you talk about the effects of alcohol on keto and the most optimal way to bulk on keto? And then Lewis Fieldman asked, talk about peri-workout carbs and advanced ketogenic resistance athletes, Prius, please. So a little bit for before. All right, so alcohol. I, You can have some red wine. It's just going to be carbs, man. So a little bit. It's not going to kick you out. You know, whiskey, carb liquors, stuff like that. It's not going to kick you out. And if you want to enjoy it, then enjoy it. Just, you can't go crazy. What I have noticed from some of my friends who drink is they said they're a lot more sensitive to alcohol. And so I don't have to drink as much to get the same buzz. So great thing there. You don't have to really tax your liver since you're in keto. Um, and then cyclical bulking optimal. So if you want to just smash and gain weight, yeah, cyclical bulking is the way to go. Four months into carbs, four months out of carbs, four months into carbs, four months out of or four weeks, <laughs> four months. So in and out, in and out, in and out, cycling through. You kind of feel like shit a little bit, but because your body's always switching energy systems. But if you want to bulk on keto, it goes back to get your macros up um, to where you're in ketosis, obviously 70% fats. You can bring it down. Once you're in, you can bring your fats down to 60, 65, bring your protein up and increase your carbs. So it's playing with those macros to get you in keto. You have to keep peeing on sticks. You got to still keep measuring your blood so you can find out what workouts may or may not keep you in ketosis with the carb amount you're taking in. So if I do legs and I do hundred grams of carbs and I'm still in keto, good. If I do arms and I do hundred grams of keto and I'm out, bad. Not bad, but I'll be back in the next day, but I'm going to make sure that I dial that down next time to maybe 75. All right. These are big jumps, but you get the idea. All right. So I think that covers it and it's not even half an hour, 25 minutes. <laughs> All right. So that's how we do it. So just so you know, October 23rd and 24th, I'm going to put this out there. We have a retreat in Park City. Dr. Jake Wilson's coming down. Ryan's coming down. We're obviously going to have a great hangout. Heidi Campos put this whole thing together. Um, 
We got a chef down there. I think, oh, man, I just spaced the name. I think it's Chef Rob. I don't want to do that. You can, Chef Jay, bam, how you like that? He sounds like a brilliant individual. He has a great mentality on food and eating, and it's going to be amazing. So Park City, it's going to be two days, and we actually have a VIP on Sunday where we can all, you only open to like 25, 30 people. You can buy your tickets there. We're all just going to hang out and just pick each other's brains. Saturday is going to be a fantastic presentation from all of us, and then a round table. So you can get your information, knowledge, how to really optimize your life in that weekend and it's park city so if you're flying in man if you if you haven't ever been to utah utah if you don't visit park city you're missing out that's my favorite place i've been a lot of places park city is still up there with the number one areas all right so that's going to happen october 23rd 24th of this year um we're also going to i'm going to be at the o in september here coming up on 18th 19th 17, 18, 19th, we're going to be, you know, doing a whole bunch of awesome stuff with Ben there. And stay tuned for more because more ass kicking is always along the way. Peace.